This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. You know, they did me wrong. They did me dirty. Uh, they made me drink. But I'm not a baby. I'm not a kid. And co-host Marnie Winfield. Yeah, you can be pretty sure that the decision that you made was the right one. Guy kind of paved the way for what was supposed to happen, I feel. It is the 22nd of January. The year is 2022. My name is Corey Winfield, and this is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Welcome. And when I say welcome, not only welcoming you, I'm also welcoming a couple guys to the studio. My good friend, Eric. Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? And my new friend, Al. Al, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having us. Now, you guys were here to buy some merch. What the kids call it on, on the streets. The merch. Yeah, that buy that merch. And <laughs> no, actually, you reached out to me, Erica, a few weeks ago. We just had a hard time connecting because pancreas and stuff, I don't know, whatever. But now you're here. But you reached out to me and you're like, hey, man, want to do, you called it a vlog. Right. And then I made fun of you on the podcast for that. <laughs> right. It's a, hey. it a vlog. I'm like, well, I don't think Eric knows what a vlog Beginning is. Beginning struggles. Yeah. And what you really want to do is you want to start a little show. Yeah. You know? So um, me and Al were sitting there talking one day. Originally, the plan came up to where we were going to pick sections out of the big book and just kind of read them and talk about them. After speaking with Al, he had the idea that maybe we could expand it and just have certain topics for certain days. And then we could ask people for what they would want to hear. Since Al came through AA and I came through MAT, he also had that MAT side. And we figure since we're from different worlds, like why not try and bring it together in a podcast and answer some questions and just, you know, plant some seeds. Hell yeah. You know, I got some equipment. I'm always trying to hock stuff. <laughs> right. Sure, it's old equipment. Whatever. Let's go see Corey. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm that guy now. Huh? You're that guy. I'm enabling. You're like, you're like our new dealer. There yeah. you go. <laughs> hey, you got that merch. Yeah, you keep coming back. This <laughs> one's free. <I'm>, All right. <laughs> I told you guys before you left, I'm going to hook you up with some yeah. free stuff. Oh, no, I'm going to hook you up. Because that's, that's how I have to do it. <laughs> Just yeah. don't take free stuff in prison, you know. Whoa! <laughs> see, wow. see, see, candy you on your. There. I went there. On your pillow. Yeah. You just, I did. Oof, there's no. Rough. There's no candy on your pillow. There. You get that back. <laughs> You're lucky to get a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> so let's welcome um, you guys in by introducing it, because obviously I just said you guys are going to start your own thing, which is cool, and I hope as much as I can. So let's give a little background. Al, you've never been on the podcast before, so why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, man? And. Sure. Uh, well, everyone, I'm Al, and I am an alcoholic, grateful recovering alcoholic. Uh, I just started doing a little one-minute video on Facebook, just something to get the recovery message out there. And, and what I really like about recovery is it's so all-inclusive. You know, our disease of addiction, it doesn't matter what color you are, who you are, what you believe in, who you follow, what you vote for. It's non-discriminatory, and it'll attack you whether you're rich, poor, or white, black, or everything in between. And just getting the message out there, because there is so much stigma and shame out there, that's really what we're trying to combat against. And those little one minute videos is just they're just that you know the little tiktok videos that people probably scroll past but you know when it started i was out to help one person and, and honestly that was myself yep. i just wanted to help me and i wanted to you know get out of my comfort zone because i'm naturally uh, i'm an introvert i really don't like people that much <laughs> which is funny because i'm going into the field of helping people and, and getting into recovery and um you know as i've been going on my journey you know i've only got uh we figured it out this morning in my meeting was 559 days of sobriety as i'm going down the line i just realized that there's people that can be helped and if i can yeah. save one person then it's all worth it and that's really what we started this whole thing about and there's so many more ways to recovery you know there's you don't have to be aa or na you, there's there's other ways to do it you can you can do it without a spiritual uh presence there's so much that we can offer. And so that was really the main goal of this was to get the message out there that if you need help, it's out there. The recovery community is growing in vast numbers. I mean, one out of seven people is addicted to something somewhere down the line. And only one out of 10 of those people are getting treatment or getting help. So getting more people to understand that recovery isn't just about going to AA and finding God. While that path may have worked for me, and I, I very much am an advocate for it. I'm more about healthier lifestyle, uh, living a better life, just, you know, because people don't realize in addiction, when we're in the midst of it, you know, paying your bills and like having a roof over your head and buying a car, all those things, putting gas in the tank, these are big accomplishments to us. Mm -hmm. So 
that's really what it's about is getting the message out there that there's life outside of uh, addiction. There's a good life to be had in recovery. And we just want people to know that it's okay to reach out. The, uh, the shame, the stigma, the guilt, all that stuff needs to go away. And, and it's it, one day at a time that we combat it. How do people find you then on TikTok? I'm not, a, I'm not familiar with TikTok. I'm not on TikTok yet. I said it's like TikTok. I'm on Facebook right now. Okay. It's just, so I, just I post to my page. I post to Reels. Uh, yeah, Reels. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've only got 19 of them out there, and they're only one minute long. Okay. So it's just something that takes me about 10 minutes. I, I'm pretty raw off the cuff. It's, it's me recording it while I'm on a walk with the dogs, and that's Sweet. it. You know, I think one of the, the main messages that we want to get out And I hear this a lot in my field of work is, you know, well, I swear I'm a good person or I swear I'm not a bad guy. And it's it's not about good or bad or right or wrong. It breaks down. And I feel like if everybody looked at it like this, we would have an easier time. Healthy versus unhealthy. When we make unhealthy choices, that produces unhealthy options. When we start making healthy choices, those doors open as well. And the mindset that we're combating right now is still good or bad. You know, if you looked at it from a standpoint of healthy versus unhealthy, I feel like we would make a lot of headway in like hospitals and ERs, you know, Um, because like right now we're having an issue communicating, you know, and I get it. You know, when nurses see the same person over and over again, you know, they get jaded. You know, police officers are the same way. The difference is, is we see the people that come back to life. We watch as they crawl out of their hole and it's like if everybody got to see that i feel like everybody would want to join you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and going back to something you just said too about good and bad when we're in the midst 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 midst, that's a weird word when when we're in the midst how would you spell that m-i-d-s-t I thought he said the word missed. Missed. I said missed. Midst. Midst. When we're in the midst the midst. of our addiction, oh. like all we're doing is hanging out with usually either ourselves, at least for me. I don't know, Al, if you like to drink with other people when you were getting blowed. Nope. No, I drank at home. <laughs> yeah, by myself. You know, So I didn't like to be around people, but I didn't put myself around good people. And by good people, I mean people that were doing good things. And so when we do that lifestyle change, and which is hard because we don't know how to do it. Exactly. How do I hang out with people that aren't at home just drinking themselves to death? I don't know. But you learn eventually and by going to meetings, by meeting people. But you start putting yourself in those good situations. And yeah, good things are going to happen because you're putting yourself around people who are doing good things and who have opportunities for you. And it blows your mind at first because you're just like, what? All this good stuff's happening to me. Right. Like, and, when's the shoe going to fall? Yeah. When's it going to? Oh, yeah. I know. Right now, I'm, let me just go to the store because I can end this real quick. And that way, at least <laughs> I right. know what's coming. And a lot of times, I didn't realize that, but I was a, I was uncomfortable being in a good place. Yeah. I didn't know how to handle that. Like, what do I do? It's unfamiliar. It, what, it's coming. It's coming soon. I'm going to screw it up. Yeah. Let me just screw it up now. And that way, yeah, I can be back in misery. And, oh, this is familiar, though. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Relapse again. Well, you know, I can go to treatment. I can do this again. You know, let me go back to IOP. Let me, you know, do, do stuff I'm familiar with. Cause I was very unfamiliar with the success of life right. and, and living life, but you, you get over it and you get to appreciate it. And then you get married and stuff and build yourself <laughs> a nice little studio and start yeah. your own little company. And, and it, you're just helping people left and right. Yeah. It feels damn good. Tell you the truth. And anybody can do it I was given a ride to a guy today and I was like, look, man, everything happens for a reason. I don't know why you relapsed or why you went off the rails. I have no idea, but God put you in this car today, you know, and I would love for someone to be the middleman kind of, or our representative, not necessarily our representative, but to represent a certain community that I'm not a part of. And I said, this is something, you know, if you want to get on the straight and narrow and you can convince yourself that, you can't do drugs anymore and you can't drink, you can't do any of that. And you want a good life, man, hit me up. You know, I'll direct you to the trainings you need to go to the people you need to contact to really just dive in. And I told him that, you know, for me, I started the podcast podcasting isn't for everybody, but for me, it was something I was familiar with and it helped. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of threw that out there to him. And next thing I know he's on the phone 
with a loved one and he's like, yeah, well, you know, Corey and Corey and I were talking about this and this and that. And so I, I can already see the wheels turning in them. Sure. You know, and sometimes you just need that little bit of hope, that little bit of purpose or somebody to believe in you that, yeah, you, you can pull yourself out and can do it. And I just, I just hope that he does. And, and you guys, man, I really hope that you guys can do this. I know you can, but it's a commitment. That's, that's the, the kicker. Sure. Sure. Cause you know, if you're going to do one every Saturday, if you're going to post a new one every Saturday, make sure you post them every Saturday, you know? And yeah. If you're doing it twice a week, well, make sure you do it. You know, there'll be days where you're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm tired. I've been doing this, 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 this. And, oh, I can't even. That's when I usually crack the whip on Marty. I'm like, get your ass in here. <laughs> get your ass in here. She knows how I talk big and bad when she's not here. You know, I think Smart what guy. it comes down to is it's, it's like you said, the mindset, right? It's a proven fact that we talk to ourselves more than anybody else. So it stands to reason what we say to ourselves is very important. When we're cussing at someone or talking down to someone, our minds and bodies don't know the difference between if we're doing it to them or us. And we actually poison ourselves with our words and with our thoughts. And it's like once that mindset shifts, Mm -hmm. there's a calm that takes place. Like you're not on a rat race. It's not fight or flight anymore. Now I have options. You gave that kid an option. And he was living in fight or flight. So it's like, because of your recovery, you were able to affect his recovery. And like you said, the wheel started spinning. He now has a healthy option. And he was, he was proud of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and for me, it goes to you, man. It doesn't hurt me at all. Right. You know, and it's all up to him. But it, if anything, it would help. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? He says no, or doesn't show up. Yeah. And you know? it's, it's on him to just, does he want to do this? Cause I definitely would, definitely would welcome him aboard in, in, in a certain role and yeah it's on it's on him now and you know if it, if it doesn't come through then like i said this doesn't hurt me at all right you know but if he does then wow you know he can really help a lot of people and he'll help himself in the process and you know his thing was yeah but you know some of these people are like you know 21 and they're in they're in college and they don't care and they don't want to listen but i said okay nobody could have told me anything either but i would have loved to have been told Hey, call this number if you ever do need it. Or you know what? You could reach out and don't be ashamed Yeah, if you need help. You know, because that is one of the biggest things. And Al mentioned that earlier, too. It's just like, okay, now I got to tell people that this is this is the, the problem. And now I'm going to be viewed as a bad person. And, oh, I don't want to tell people. And you get stuck in that ashamed mode when we really shouldn't be ashamed. But that's how we're taught. And that's how... Yeah, I, th- I, and I think anyway. that's part of the stigma that's out there, too, is, you know, oh, I lost my train of thought there. Oh, I, I brought it back. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> the microphone got in my face and made me all nervous. Um, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of to have a disease. Nobody gets mad at anybody for having cancer or um, for catching a cold or COVID. Nobody, nobody shames you for catching COVID. But we have a disease. We have this addiction problem to whatever it may be. And all of a sudden there's this stigma, the shame that's out there. I mean, for me, the very beginning was recovering out loud and proud. I mean, I weeded all my, all the people that were in my life, weeded themselves out naturally. I didn't have to do anything. It's, Oh, you got sober. I don't want anything to do with that. And it's amazing how small things have made such big differences in so many people's lives. I mean, I hate to pull out the old cliches, but as soon as you get sober, the day you get sober, a hundred lives get better. And the only people that don't get better is your drug dealer and the uh, bartender. And I mean, they're not hurting. That's for sure. Um, so that's, that's the barriers that we're trying to break down is letting people know that you can be in recovery and be proud of yourself. And it's okay that we did these horrible, heinous things in our addiction, because let's be honest, nobody is, has gotten to recovery on a, on a pink cloud. Nobody's like, oh, this was just the best way to get here and coasted right in. No, it, it's pain and it's suffering. And, and, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And I mean, that's why people in recovery, they're our tribe, you know, I get into an AA meeting and I just know those people without knowing them. You know, I'm always home. There's a vibe there. You walk in yeah. and you feel it. Yeah. I agree with that. It's definitely a spiritual vibe for sure. And that's the, that's the thing about breaking down those barriers. I mean, realistically, uh, recovery has not been a long, uh, around very long. I mean, AA has been a lo- around for, what, almost 100 years? 
so recovery is still very, very new and there's still a lot of kinks to, to get out. And there's a lot of prejudices out there that we need to combat. You know, the one thing is within the last four years, the recovery capital that has grown, I mean, more recovery housing, more, more, more you know, options for that, like, like what you do. I mean, you created a position. I mean, like you give rides to people that need to get there. And it's like a lot of times that's their barrier is they have, you know, disappointed people so much or hurt people so much that their phones aren't ringing and nobody's answering. Mm -hmm. And then you come in and they don't even know you. And it's like a stranger is giving kindness. Sometimes that's all it takes mm -hmm. is that one moment of kindness could be a make or break for people in exactly. early recovery. Exactly. And the PIHPs, some of them, I know Mid-State, I'll call them out by name, uh, they would rather put somebody in a bus. They don't care that they want to go cheapest, which technically putting someone on a bus, like there's a lot more than, than that they have to do in their contract with the state of Michigan. Right. Is they have to get the person from their house to the treatment center. It doesn't say just buy the bus ticket, but that's what, that's what they try to get away with. But your boy, you know your boy ain't letting them. <laughs> it's like, don't get a bus. I got this. No, it's okay. You, your boy ain't going to let them get away with that. So no. I'm like, all right, if you're going to do that, well, then you need to get an Uber or a cab to pick them up from their house and take them to the bus station. Then you need to take them from the bus station where they're arriving to the treatment center. And it's not on the treatment center to get them back to the bus. No, it's on the PHP. So they right. need to get with the program. Or you can call Corey. Right. We'll take care of it all for you. And you know what? We're, co we're recovery coaches. Absolutely. And we know we've been there. Yeah. We're not judging those people, and they really do find it useful and helpful. I mean, naturally, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go, hey, which one do you think is going to be better for the person? Like, I'll bet, and, and I've never been in a car before with you, but I'll bet on those rides, you guys talk the whole way. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because you understand, you've been in that seat, you know that pain, mm -hmm. and instead of being judgmental, you're accepting, you know, and through that, you're loving them. You know, and sometimes they haven't felt that people like us, the three of us have never felt that in so long that one spark of kindness could really start that fire burning. You know what I mean? Like me and Al were talking and I was telling them that I love without any conditions. Like the moment I meet a recovery, I love them, you know, and I don't put any expectations on that because if we do have a misstep, I call it a flat tire. If we do have a flat tire, I don't have any emotional connection with that. So I can come at them with something like, you know, let's just fix the tire and move on. Like you're a human being. I mean, we've, we've all made mistakes, you know? And one of the things that I learned is I need to treat myself with patience because when there's something that I don't know, it's okay to not know, you know, just learn it. You know, it's okay to break. It's not okay to stay broken. You know, and that's, you know, why I do what I do because no one should have to stay in that darkness any longer than they have to. No one belongs in there. All right. Well, before we get emotional, Eric, <laughs> <There's a tissue. laughs> let's, let's get back on, on what you guys are doing because I think I told you get emotional. No, no, no. no. I said, don't get emotional. <laughs> no, but you know, there's going to be some haters out there because that's what they do. And we got to give haters a little something to hate on. Well, they will, and they'll, they'll be like, oh, who are these guys? Who do they think they are? And naturally. Well, his name's Al, and I'm, I'm Eric. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep, hi. Nice well, to you meet guys you. know. You don't know about this. You're not doctors. You're yeah. not therapists. You oh, I'm not a doctor. You know, Eric said the most amazing thing the other day. I thought this was hilarious. He was talking to a doctor. He was advocating for a recovery. And he, he asked the doctor very bluntly, how many years did you go to school? And the doctor's like, I went to school for eight years. Wow, that, that, that must have took a long time. And he's, he just straight up was like, I have 10 years in addiction, so I basically have a doctorate in, in uh, suffering yeah. and pain and addiction. <laughs> no, well, what I had said was, I have a PhD, a personal history. That's degree. right. Mm. You know, and Free like, hard and, drugs. Right? And got the doctor <laughs> laughing enough to where he could take off the doctor hat. And I told him, I was like, all I'm asking you to do is be a human being. I said, you know, st their family's getting them at 9 o'clock. They're taking them to the treatment center. That person in there is in so much pain, and you could be the reason why they want to live. You discharge them. In two hours, they're going to be back, more drunk. The cops will have to be called. And I told him, I said, you want to stop the hamster wheel? This is one way to do it. Just allow me to help you. And he did. And that person got the treatment. Sweet. You know? Yeah, I loved what he said, because I, I got thinking about that. I was like, I got 17 years in my active addiction. 
I have a doctorate's degree in addiction. I know exactly what it feels like and what it's like. So for those people that are my haters, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So hate away. Mm -hmm. If someone, I'm at a point where if someone hears something about me, it's like, please go ahead and hear it again. You know, add to it. I, I want to be like snorting cocaine off strippers in Russia. I want to be doing some <laughs> sick shit right. because there's nothing that you can say that I haven't already done to myself. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to break me down any more than I was already broken before I got to recovery, before I right. found that spirit spiritual ailment that, that made me a better human being. That's, that's what I needed to find. And everybody's path is different. So those haters, you know, I come from a, a long line of being a salesman and every time you hear a no, just add, you know, a K in the front, and a W at the end, they just don't know enough information yet. And, and realistically, I pray that some stranger will bring them the desperation or the gift of recovery someday, because a lot of people that are making fun of us, they're making fun of the fact that they are suffering too. Right. Or they know somebody that is, and they just don't know how to help. So as far as I'm concerned, if everybody that follows us, that listens to us, hates us, at least we're reaching somebody, you know, and you just don't know when that's going to affect them or how it's going to change their life. So the haters, bring them on, you know. Right. And it takes effort to get off your ass and do something. And a lot of them are probably thinking, man, that would be so cool. I want to do something like that. But I don't know how, and that takes effort. F them guys. What do they know? Right. They're so stupid. <laughs> Big head, all that 217 <laughs> crap they're always wearing. Looks pretty cool. I hate that, Where too. Where can I get it at? Looks I don't stupid. want it. I mean, I made a mistake already. I already looked at the, the microphone and went, oh, <laughs> like, what do I do now? Then I just realized if I just look at you two, it's like it's not even there, you know? You know, as far as the haters go, like um, my mentor, Wally, said it best. He said, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. And heal people, heal people. You know what I mean? And it's like if you think about it like that, you know, I mean, it's so true. Like the person that is dogging you, there is something about themselves that they find in the video and they just weren't ready to deal with it. So instead they're just going to hate and it's okay. You know what I mean? Like it's okay to be that way because if you don't have haters, you're doing it wrong. Right. And I, I hate to brag here. <laughs> brag, please. You got, you got some haters. Go ahead, huh? Greg. It's okay. Right, but, uh, I had a guy who was, uh, was hating on me and he, he said, <laughs> Eric's laughing because I think he knows. And he said that um, <laughs> I started the podcast, you know, just to get women, and that I had, I had slept with over 15,000 women. <laughs> 15,000 women. You've been around, dude. Uh huh. 15,000. Can you even Man, imagine that? I, I think that's more than Wilt Chamberlain, didn't he? Have the record. <laughs> dude, <laughs> I don't How know. Somebody do added to that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, my wife was like, What the hell? I was like, Honey, think about that for a minute. Right. I mean, I'm more interested in did you raw dog at all? <laughs> or like, what diseases do you have? I mean, is it a fungus colony down there or what? Is it even still attached? No, never had anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was like, well, Who in the hell is this? Does he got me confused with about 18,000 other people? I guess. Yeah, 15,000. I like, What in the hell? Was that a hater that just like were they trying to rev you up or what? He I was mean, bad at hating. I, wow. I don't. I don't know what his deal was. I still to this day don't know what his deal was, and I. Don't, I seriously think he might have had me confused with somebody else. See something like that, like that's got nothing to do with you. No, his name was Brendan something. I don't even remember his last name, but I had met the dude in passing. Didn't really even know him, and I remember one time I gave him advice because he was all worked up after an AA meeting about his boss at his job telling me sucked or whatever at his job. And I was like, look, bro, you can't drink over that. You know, like just, no. you know, don't worry about those people. Their opinions are really none of your business. And three months later, Corey, you slept with a guy who's just using this to get women. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you dumbass. I was on the radio for 20 I years. Mean, Why wouldn't I start a podcast? Your wife is also on the podcast. So, yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> let, let's yeah, be Yeah, because it worked. I got her, bro. Right. I mean, if it is true, though, it does give guys like me and Eric some hope. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there's That'd someone like for everyone out there. Between between us, I mean, shoot shoot you know? for at least 2,000, you know. Right. Let's uh, start low. Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. And it, it pissed me off at first when I thought, that's such a dumbass thing to say. Like, right. this dude don't even know me. So, anyway, hope that dude's still alive. Yeah. If he reaches out, we'll help him. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel, you know? <laughs> you if, if you reach out, we'll help you. With all 15,000 exactly. of them. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to come on the podcast and explain to me what the hell. Right. But he was drunk, I'm sure. Let's and, talk it out. Yeah. It's one of those things where I'm, sh well, I never did anything like that, but we all do stupid, like you said, Eric, we all make mistakes, but we all do stupid things when we're drunk too that we regret later. And I'm sure that's probably one of them that he did. And 
Yeah, I think like when some when you meet somebody for the first time, like they're looking at you through their eyes. But when we're looking at it, we think they know our secrets. So it becomes a thing like we act a certain way or we get nervous or whatever. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like they're going to give us the impression. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, you lost me too. So basically what I'm saying is, is like when you meet someone, we have anxiety over that meeting because we're looking at it with all our dirty secrets. They're looking at it as just meeting us for the first time. Does that make sense? You have a therapist. You should probably talk to them. <laughs> yeah. It's time for another you know, appointment. Another one. Yeah, when I, when I, I mean, thought about Google meeting it. you today, Al, I was like, oh, uh, I know all my dirty secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you should really talk to somebody about yeah, that. Well, yeah. Well, I'm talking to you guys. You know okay. what I mean? Well, yeah. we're not therapists. We're right. not doctors. Right. So well, we he can't. has a PhD. Yeah. Pretty hard job. See? Yeah, that's, you know? that's what I did. <laughs> no, I definitely explained it wrong. We can just move on. <laughs> I've embarrassed well, myself. Well, I offered, I offered my help. Hey, go, go, go I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah. So what's what's the name of the? I'm not going to call it a vlog. But what's, what's the name? What's the name of the show? We'll call it a show. What's the name of the show? Got Eric. Recovery talks with Alan Eric. You didn't think like recovery talks with Tyrone and little Jim or something like that would be? Well, if a little they were part of it, I would say recovery talks with Alan Eric, Tyrone, and Jim. Just start Tyrone adding. and Jim. Just people. Oh. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, you just start you adding know. people to it. Sure. And then, like, you know, like Keith will be six, next. At six, seven episodes in, people are like, well, where the hell's Tyrone? Right. Where's, and where's, Jim. You got to have a Lil. Right. Where, where's Lil Jim? Right. <laughs> Lil Jim. You know? Like, Al's like, this isn't fun. I know. It's, <laughs> it's Al and Eric. I mean, it's recovery talks. That's what it is. Well, it can grow, too. I mean, we want to read a little bit and then kind of discuss it back and forth with each other, mainly from the big book as our primary idea, but... That are, the idea has already evolved because I told him, I was like, hey, if we're just doing the big book, we're pretty much just one pathway in it. And I want to reach as many people as possible so we can read from multiple different um, pathways. You know, we can do NA and AA and, and, and uh, recovery dharma. And, smart and recovery. Smart recovery. Yeah. I mean, there's so many pants out there that we want to immerse people in the information. And that's really the big thing is getting the information out there, letting people know that there are people that care about them enough to want to help. Because I think the biggest thing, the roadblock that we run into with anybody is they just don't know who to ask. They don't know who to turn to. They don't know who to trust. Uh, and, and finding somebody that's going to look at you with non-judgmental eyes and, and what Eric does in his, his job is just the way he says it is so elegant. And how, how, how do you say it? It's, um, I love what I do because I live what I do. Yep. And, and that just that resonates so much with me. You know, loving, helping people get on their feet and live a healthier, happier lifestyle. Because once, once we are addicted to our drug of choice, there is no control. I mean, it's just you are literally working to get your next high, your next drunk, your next fix. Mm -hmm. Knowing who to turn to is not even in their mind. It doesn't occur to them. You know, they have no idea that life can be better. They just think it is what it is. And if we can get that message out there, uh, whether it be through talking about one pathway or another, great. You know, again, it's it was started to help one person. And primarily it was me and him just yeah. to kind of do our step work and, and keep it fresh in our minds. But, you know, when I started doing those little one minute videos, I can't believe the response I got. I mean, I've talked to people from different countries and, and awesome? people are yeah, like, oh, you've helped me so much. And it's like, I didn't do anything. I just showed you a little compassion and tender care. That's it. But you're being vulnerable. Right. And it's being talked about. The more it's talked about, the less shame, the less guilt that's out there, you know? Like, um, in Gaylord, there's... Gaylord. Gaylord. You're sorry. saying it wrong. In Gaylord, there is, um, there's a coach that I work with closely. Um, her name is Grayson, right? And every time I go into a store, they're saying, you know, oh, yeah, do you know Grayson? She was in here. And she's had the same experience with, like, going to get her hair cut. Like, people bring up my name. We've saturated Gaylord because we, we recover loudly. You know, yeah. like it doesn't matter. Like, like if I'm waiting at at, at at a Walmart to cash out, like the 217 logo, I can't count how many times says, they say, what's that area code? Well, it's not an area code. And now we're in line. We're, we're talking about it, you know, and it's talking about recovery. You know, I feel like if if we have to be the one to start the conversation, so be it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and everybody knows somebody that's struggling. 
which is fact in earlier al you said one in seven people have an addiction Mm -hmm. i think nine out of ten people are addicted to something something well whether it's destroying their life or not is what i meant by that you know like i wasn't talking about caffeine or nicotine or or sugar zippy flippies jelly bellies things like that i was talking about (laughs) cocaine heroin alcohol i was talking about any root or (laughs) tutors or (laughs) i still think it's more i still i'm sure i I mean where was that report done al (laughs) everybody has their everybody has a vice but what i'm saying is when that vice takes over and it becomes an unhealthy vice that's when we need to look at another another pathway or another way to get out of that because you know with the nicotine and stuff like that that's not going to ruin your life you know it will uh-huh. it'll slowly kill you but vaping it's, kills me it's not going to kill you today alcohol you know i can i can get drunk enough to die yeah. uh, or i could kill somebody by getting behind the wheel of a car i could eat enough ice cream that it would kill me in one day did you know that you if would, you're a diabetic you yeah, would have that, brain uh-huh. freeze and that, so bad. those diabetics need recovery. And <laughs> so, I, what, I mean, ice cream's good. Oh, that, she said it would be like sugar shock. Because my, my whole theory on that, which we have to wrap this up, but I'll get into this real, this important ice cream thing real quick. Ice cream's is important. I figured that your body can only process so much stuff, kind of like alcohol. You can only drink so much for you just for you pass out. You, your body will shut down. And I figured, well, I'll just do that with ice cream. Your, your body can only process so much ice cream before it starts get, re, getting rid of it, right? Right. The doctor said, no, you would go into a coma. I think it was a sugar coma or something. She said my body would shut down. So in my opinion, and this is just, I feel like caffeine and nicotine are the two gateway drugs. Like people talk about marijuana being a gateway drug. I don't believe that. I believe caffeine and nicotine are the two gateway drugs. And then how it spirals from there. And that's Eric Omron. Eric, how do the, how do the people reach you to discuss this? <laughs> Do you really want me to give out my number? Or what? No, but you can hit him up on Facebook. <laughs> yep. Hey, I appreciate you having us. No, that's man. great, man. Thanks. Yeah, and we'll we'll get you back on again. And yeah, I can't wait. And anything you guys need, man, I'll definitely help you out as much as I can and support you guys because I like that kind of stuff. One question though: Is it going to be live? Eventually, I think it would be great to go live. I think at first we need to work the bugs out. We need yeah. to get our style kind of down. It's more or less about getting the message out. It really has nothing to do with the likes, the thumbs up, the hearts, the, right. I just want people to share it. I want people to obviously enjoy it. We don't even know how long it's going to be yet. I mean, if we make 20 minutes, great. But like you said, it has to be a consistent thing. We have to commit to it. So we need to work the kinks out and go from there. I mean, we're going to play it by ear. We're probably going to record the first one within a week or two. Yeah. I would hope that's kind of our goal. Um, and we're just, we're going to start with the big book and we're going to see how it evolves. You know, we're going to play it by ear. There's no real plan, but live would definitely be so much fun because then you could have audience interaction like, Hey, can you guys read from this? Or I, I've always wanted to hear this out loud. Um, cause a lot of people don't do big book meetings anymore. You know, they're, they're out there and they're really good, but, uh, you know, and, and there's more things to read from. I mean, it could be anything regarding, regarding, um, recovery and that's, that's the main part. So. Yeah, well, I definitely agree with that. There's a report that said one in seven people that listen to whatever um, <laughs> <laughs> are going are gonna to demand that you go live. Yeah. You know? But no, but it, it, the live thing is kind of cool. People are always saying, oh, you should do live, you should do live. But that's the beauty of the pocket. Listen when you want. You know, and the harder thing with what you guys are going to do with the video, which I'm sure there's going to be video and audio, is... Like someone can be taking a poop or be driving <laughs> or whatever and, and listen to the it. podcast. Yeah. yeah. You know, but for the video, people are going to have to, you know, kind of yeah. pay attention to. And, and not that that's bad. I mean, hell, people do it all the time. You know, the lady on TikTok or whatever is making $17 million a year, which is insane. So but, I think it's going to start on YouTube, but it's going to evolve into a podcast. Okay. You know, that's kind of what we talked about. We can always take the audio and put it up somewhere as well. Sure. So. If, yeah, whether it makes sense if you're like, hey, guys, see this, you know, I don't know. I think it'll it'll work itself out. And I think you guys are going to do great. And you got my support. So that, that's all that really support. matters. I mean, you got my support. So I appreciate you. I really do. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, but thanks, guys. Eric, Al, thanks for coming on. And I'll have you guys' links and stuff all over. And, and let me give that money for all that merch. Get that I'll, money. Uh, I'll, then I'll give you your free samples. <laughs> we paid them to say all the nice things just so we understand each other. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. When a bunch of free shit from 217 Recovery. Go to the app or the website, 217recovery.com.